Hello, everybody. This is Drew Demon, the Devil Stockbroker, uh, here for a quick live stream at uh, the close of the day for Power Hour. Sorry, it's been a bit of a quiet, uh, bit of a quiet start for me this week. Trying to get back in the saddle and still got a lot of things going on at the day job, but uh, I'm starting to get back to a point where I can do a few regular streams. So hopefully, we'll make the most out of that while we can. Give folks a few minutes to start coming in here. <laughs> All right. So if you're new, if you're new here in the Discord, I'll be watching the live stream questions and the live stream studio updates. Um, studio updates is just for the uh, professionals and uh, mods to let me know what's going on in the chat. But I'll be paying close attention to the live stream questions. So if you have a question for me, or if you want to discuss a ticker, if there's anything you need me to cover or explain, just put it there, and uh, I'll see that. And YouTube chat, I'll try to. Uh, I'll try to keep up with you as best I can, but it's been getting, <laughs> it's been getting fast. <laughs> I wonder what super hot, hot live streams are going to be sponsoring us today in our chat. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> So I've been uh, I've been paying attention to BRQS's uh, patterns lately. Um, I think I'll wait for a few more people to uh, drop in here. Hey, if you're uh, if you're here in the Discord or if you're watching the YouTube stream, uh, do me a favor, drop a like, and uh, if you haven't subscribed to us, please do so so you can get notified when we go live. And also go ahead and share the link to the stream to everybody because it's kind of hard to uh, get folks' attention if they're looking for DD on. Uh, on all of our usual tickers at the end of the day, because I know most people are watching uh, watching Trey and Matt Kors and all of them closing up their day. Uh, not that I'm trying to steal their thunder, but I know that they don't cover tickers like this, and BRQS has been on our radar uh, for a little while now. So the one that I'm... The one thing that I'm looking for in BRQS is this volume shelf, which we've now we've now solidly eliminated the entire ceiling for BRQS. Now we've established a new support shelf here at around 35 cents, which is excellent for this stock. The um, previous trading on this stock before this date, it goes back. Let's see how far does BRQS actually go back. It goes back a ways. But the volume on it is so insignificant by comparison to the uh, to where it's been trading down here. Yeah, even if I go back by almost a year or even like the full year, the next level of resistance on the shelf doesn't even start until 60 cents. So I'll go ahead and delete this now because we don't really need it. Johnny Short Slayer is asking for Mullen. Um, I'm very sad to say that Mullen's not looking good. Mullen is very sick right now. Um, so Mullen is touching its final leg of support at 135. And I did let everybody know this a few days ago, but I did say that if Mullen broke 160, then it was going to head to 140 and its big support was going to be at 135. If it breaks below this level, very likely Mullen's going to see a dollar. Um, I'm just letting you know, uh, and I've uh, I've been out of my Mullen position for weeks now. Um, well, I'm sorry, not weeks. That's that's not true. Uh, my position got uh, my calls expired worthless on Thursday, last Thursday, so on the 14th. 
so that's uh that's an unfortunate uh it's an unfortunate end to um to last week's trading on Mullen. I know that there are good prospects for the company to make a turnaround, but there's just not a lot of good signs coming from it. Even with the bullish, uh, even with the bullish news, there's still a lot of fear and doubt surrounding the uh, nature of the company's um, executive staff and uh, their actual ability to start manufacturing vehicles. They've said a lot of good things about their ability to do it, but they've not actually provided evidence, and that's what's fueling a lot of this fear. So it's, it, is it still a squeeze candidate? Um, let's go and investigate it really quickly because it's, it's going to, we're going to have to actually dive into it and find out if it's, if it's still possible. There's still a bunch of strange stuff too with what they've done behind the scenes with their filings and the new amendments and kind of loopholes they've carved themselves out. It looks like they can dilute uh, and execute warrants before that 884 price point, but they have to adjust. Uh, they have to adjust the shares that they're introducing. Uh, I believe by weighted average. Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're able to do certain things like that, and I think what we're seeing is uh, we're seeing kind of incognito, uh, kind of tried attempted cover up share dilution. Uh, raising capital and we might see them come in and start scooping up shares cheap because they took out short positions while doing it have mm -hmm. a bunch of liquid capital and now we're going to scoop up at a discount everything they just drove down yep that's pretty much uh that's that pretty much sums it up let me go ahead and share my uh my firefox window here you can take a look at my ortex Okay. All right. So here's my Ortex. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's been a whole lot of lending volume while short interest has been declining. This is a sign of covering. Uh, the utilization has been maxed out. So the reason for this is people are getting out of their positions. There is legitimate selling going on in the stock and shorts are being forced to cover. I don't think that they're doing it naturally. The reason why I say this is because when a when a lender lends out their shares and gives uh, gives them to a short seller to sell short into the market, that short seller is basically taking a receipt saying, uh, is giving the lender a receipt saying, we need to be able to cash this in when we demand it and we need to be able to sell our stock. So if what happens is that the person who lent the share to the borrower for shorting says i want to sell my stock then the borrower is called and they are required to go and find another share and deliver it to that person so that they can sell their share usually the short is forced to buy a share in order to do it but uh it takes two days to settle that trade and then the uh and then the lender is able to sell that share back so if this is happening in mass and with the fear of dilution, there's legitimate sellers in here that are pushing the price down while at the same time shorts are being forced to get out, but it's not squeezing the price the way that it would normally. In order for a squeeze to occur, the shorts have to be forced out of their positions by pain from the price going up. That's not what's happening here. Utilization is maxed out still while the short interest is going down, and it would appear that short interest took a massive drop in shares here because shorts were just, they were forced out. A lot of them covered on April 8th and 11th, it looks like. And then the selling continued from there. So two trading days after this, you notice that there were two big red candles on the day. So I'll zoom in on this so that you can get a, get a better look at it. But these two days here, two trading days afterwards, is when it really, uh, when the selling started to get pretty severe. That's when I suspect that the lenders will return their shares, and they uh, they were able to then sell into the market, and that kind of precipitated the rest of the fall. So I'm really sorry um, to say that it doesn't look good for Mullen, at least in the short term. 
It doesn't mean that the company can't turn around and it doesn't mean that um, I'm out of the stock for good, but I am just, I have to be realistic when I look at this and I see the technicals and I, I just, I understand that nobody likes this. Nobody wants to hear this news, but I, I have to be honest when I look at this, it formed a falling wedge and then broke down below. So Holy wow, we're getting oh, some insane ahead. price action on Barks. Okay, <laughs> we'll go ahead and jump back over to that in just a second. But yeah, when I look at uh, when I look at Mullen, I suspect it's going to it's either going to hold here at 140 and find its strength and break back out above 160. If you see that, that's a buy signal for me. Um, if you know, if I see that, then I will reconsider uh, jumping back into a position with Mullen. But if it breaks down below 135 with strong selling and um it is about to cross down on the macd so it it looks uh it, it looks bearish right now i'm just telling people you know for the sake of honesty um if i if i choose to jump back into mullen i'll look to i'll look to add to a position somewhere around a dollar that's uh that's where i'd be looking at it but i need fundamental reasons to look into it. If you're asking me like, well, what about short exempts? The short exempt has have dried up. Like there's very few short exempts compared to what was happening back here when I first called it out. The short exempts during these periods were absolutely insane. And remember, Mullins diluted their stock severely now. So there's been problems. Um, they have decided to dilute on its investors. It's just, that's what they decided to do. Do I agree with it? No, not really. But I also knew that they kind of had to do that in order to, uh, in order to save the financing of the company. And this is what the goal was for people who wanted to see Mullen be saved. They wanted Mullen to be able to sell stock in order to restore the balance sheet and in order to give themselves financing to survive. This gives the company a chance. So it's not all bad. It's just, unfortunately, if you got into the play late and you purchased around like the two fifty three dollars mark, I'm sorry, but you know it's it's just the way that it is. Okay, so we're going to jump back over to BRQS, uh, this Borks Technologies, and let's go ahead and You're take a look at, the, at this one minute candle. Let me go look at this one minute candle. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, hello. What the heck? <laughs> what the hell happened here? <laughs> oh, my oh, limit would have filled. I was right. I was right. <laughs> God damn it. I was right. Oh, wow. I would have gotten a fill. Okay, so I said that it would fill it would fill a 34 cent. Okay, so I'll explain how I how I looked at this, okay? So BRQS did uh it, it did the same it did a very similar pattern um the last uh the last few trading days, okay? It it sold off in the morning and then did a slow climb, but specifically here on uh on 2 days ago back on the 19th of April um, it had a it had a sell off and it created a um, and it created a pennant pattern and it kept rising in a stair step pattern and I noticed that it trades very strongly based on the VWAP so when it hits the bottom of the VWAP is when it enters into a demand zone um, this VWAP is set at a uh, what did I have this VWAP set at. I have my VWAP set at a uh, at a high low uh, a high low average of three uh, percent. So if the uh, if the the VWAP is based on like a uh, like a three percent margin from its uh, midpoint. So if you're not familiar with VWAP, that's volume weighted average price. That's the average price at the time uh, that most traders for the day have been purchasing or selling at. So if the stock is below the VWAP, it's a zone of demand. If it's above the VWAP, then it's a zone of supply, meaning people are likely to sell. And what I noticed is that Borks will start by going far below the VWAP, and then it will start to find a midpoint, and it will have a brief, uh, it'll, it'll pop above the VWAP, very high above for a short time, and then it will retrace back to the VWAP before it goes on a run at the end of the day. And whenever there is this double bottom or an inverse head and shoulders pattern, which you can see here, this is a double bottom pattern here. It goes far below the VWAP twice, and then it surges 
to the top of the VWAP. Then it goes back to the midpoint and then goes up again. And here it did it again. It created an inverse. Uh, it created a double bottom. It went far above the VWAP and then retraced back to the midpoint. So this is what I was expecting, and I suspected I'd be able to get a fill at 34 cents. It stopped just short, so I was like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and get my trade in now. But if I had actually left my limit there, I would have gotten a better fill. I could have actually, like, this is unusual, so I wouldn't, like, bank on this. But I could have gotten uh, a price as good as, like, 32 cents. So I was doing, like, a little bit of day trading on BRQS. Please don't be too mad at me, but I was I was day trading this to try to accumulate a position. And by the way, it worked. I'm uh, I'm accumulating more shares now by doing this. This is uh, something that I don't suggest people do unless you're an experienced day trader. But um, these are these are some of the technicals that I'm looking at for this particular stock. It does it does respect the VWAP pretty strongly. But now that we're heading into the end of the day, ex I'm expecting a surge. So BRQS, what I suspect is going to happen just like the last several trading days is right at the last 30 minutes of the day is when the volume is going to start picking up and it's going to start ripping. So let's see, I called this out. Let's see, it had a big surge in the morning on the 14th of April. So this was op options expiration Friday, not that it matters for BRQS because it doesn't have options, but big surge in the morning on Friday, and then it surged again after hours, or I'm sorry, pre-market on Monday, and then it sold off. And if I remember correctly, I saw big short exempts for this day. So this was the day that triggered it for me. And then right around 20 cents, you know, it was like right around 20 cents, I was looking at this thing like, this thing is going to move. Because the short exempts were ridiculous, and we were at T plus two, so I was thinking that after after a couple more trading days, then we'd start to see some failures to deliver start to appear on the books for these uh, market makers. So I was kind of expecting a big surge, and uh, it turns out uh, turns out I was right. I think I timed it. This is like the best time trade I've done in a long time. Like literally. 20 minutes after my tweet thread finally published, that's when this thing started to move. And it did the same pattern again. It did an inverse head and shoulders and then ripped from there into close. So kind of looking for it to do the same thing again. This is really mimicking the same candles that we saw before. So there's a day trading algorithm on this one. But the thing is, is I think it might be a short day trading algorithm and retail is starting to get involved. So it's kind of messing with it, which is pretty funny. Will BRQS squeeze? That's a good question. So let's actually go take a look at uh, Ortex again. I want to take a look at uh, BRQS's short exempts. Or I'm sorry, not the short exempts, but just the regular short volume. We're got, we got 19 minutes until the close of the day, so I'll try to be quick with this. So the short interest itself is quite low, um, but the short exempts are... Let me go ahead and run an inspect on this. If you want to take a look at live stream questions, everybody, you'll see a chart from ScourgeBot show up here in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so BRQS, these uh, the short exempts on the uh, on Thursday, April the 14th was um, was one of the significant movers that let us know when this thing was going to take off. And Took a position on Tuesday, just just an hour before the closing bell, and then right as we entered power hour is when the thing started to move. So what I saw happening was that market makers were going to have to take borrows on the stock in order to fulfill those uh, short exempts because they short exempted starting at the top and brought the stock back down to a low of 18 cents. Um, it was like 18.8, .8, but anyway, the, uh, the market makers lost control of it right away again, and the stock went back up to 20 cents. So I was like, ooh, that's juicy. And I saw that, uh, I saw that most of the short exempts 
probably happen below that 20 cent mark. So I was like, that's perfect. And I went and took my buys and then I started on my twi- uh, on my Twitter thread to kind of let people know what I was seeing. And there were other fundamental reasons, but I learned most of my information after, uh, after starting my research. And I spent about, I spent about two hours. Um, I spent about two hours on the research for BRQS, uh, like at the middle of the day. And, uh, I, I finally got my fill at around 21 cents, like just, just over 21 cents. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, moved from there. But anyway, the, uh, short exempts, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the table that appeared in the, uh, live stream questions, you can see that there was a huge move on, uh, April the 14th for, uh, 766,000 short exempts, which for a float of 30 million shares, um, on this stock, which I, I believe it was 30 million, uh, at the time the uh that would be what's that like 11 11 percent no I'm, I'm doing terrible head math right now it's probably because i didn't have enough coffee today <clears throat> uh anyway so the short exempt ratios were well above 3% uh, consistently. They were above an average of uh, 6% actually over the course of the uh, previous six trading days. So this short exempt I saw as like they repositioned themselves so that they were going to try to force the stock to uh, collapse back down. And uh, if the price moved against them, then they were going to be forced to uh, they were going to be forced to take borrows and take a net short position on the stock. And the market makers don't like to do that. So at the moment, the market maker is trying to uh, keep control of the stock. But because there's no options for them to hedge with, they have to uh, they have to take opposing orders. So if retail starts buying in mass, then the market maker has to short and take their uh, and then uh, borrow the stock later using these short exempts. So if they keep doing that repeatedly, then the same thing that happened to Mullen can happen to BRQS. The funny thing is that because BRQS doesn't have options, this can actually move farther just based off of pure trading. And the reason why I say that is because the market maker can't just create shares out of nowhere using puts and buying deep in the money calls to guarantee access to shares. Um, and they can't use that to, uh, to take borrows against. And what's more, the cost of borrow on this has risen pretty sharply in a short amount of time. Um, the cost of borrow went from like, it's like 18%, it was like 18% up to 25%. So that's that's pretty that's a pretty significant move, and also the uh, shares on loan went from three point one five million all the way to sixteen point three million on uh, on Tuesday. So there's a lot of lending volume happening here that's not normal. So I'm pretty sure we're going to end up seeing BRQS on the threshold list after uh, after about I'd say six trading days from now. Um, if if this thing keeps stair stepping up and retail keeps putting their attention on it, then this can squeeze the market maker. It can actually become a short squeeze. It's just not a traditional short squeeze the way that you think of it, where the shorts are already in their position. It's actually the market maker that's taking a net short position after the fact because retail keeps buying and the market maker is filling the buy orders with those shorts that they borrowed against the stock. And if they're not locating them, then they're going to be forced to short them later on. They're going to be forced to take those borrows and it's going to put them further and further underwater. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like retail has a bucket filling a bathtub every single day. Retail just pours more water into the tub and, uh, and the market maker keeps, uh, has to lay flat in the tub and, as as the market makers get further and further underwater, it's kind of like uh, it, it's kind of like you know it, it it'll just continue to make them nervous until eventually at some point they're going to have to make mass purchase of shares while they're available, and they will probably try to do that during dilution. 
So if BRQS does any kind of dilutive event, such as with the uh, with the warrants um, or any other uh, convertible notes or anything like that, that's the likely time that the market maker will try to strike and um, and do a mass short event. Just put everything that they have to try and shake retail out of their positions and drive it back down to at least the midpoint from wherever it is. So if uh, if it if it tanks from like say if it say like gets up to 60 cents, then the market maker will try to shove it down as far as possible. For the most part, I would expect them to only get about halfway there, like back down to 30 cents. But there's a lot of upside to this and it's all going to de- depend on what retail does and whether they continue to buy. There's a lot of there's actually a lot of warrants on BRQS. The oldest ones are like the oldest ones are like at $10 and $15. Um but there's quite a few of them. I think it's like I think it's like 3 million shares at 88 cents and 6 million warrants at 60 cents or 65 cents. I I can't remember. Um, it's in the, it's in their, uh, 8K filing and the 424B prospectus from their latest SEC filing. So you can go into that and take a look for yourself. If you're, uh, if you're looking for that, I apologize. I don't have it right here in front of me. I'm just kind of trying to focus on the technicals at the moment. Oh, uh, thank you, Vinny. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add that thumbnail to this video. Thank you so much. Spy is taking a massive, massive dump. Is it really? It was nearly up 1% today when it gapped up. It's currently minus 1.7. <laughs> I love the new thumbnail. Thank you, Vinny. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. I like the glass bear and bull. It's dope. <laughs> Shorts are borked. <laughs> Shout out to Vincenzo, mod in the Discord, and our resident design chief. <laughs> Much appreciated, my dude. Okay, so we got the last 10 minutes of the trading day going on here. Um, BRQS is still looking very strong. This is the same move that it did before. So what I expect is BRQS to complete this. Um, it's it's like a really wonky cup and handle where the cup is like a double bottom. I don't know what to call it, but it's the same move from yesterday. Like this, it's the same move. Look at look at how close these are to each other. The swings are getting bigger. So whoever's doing this is getting a big position. Whatever algorithm is doing this is getting a huge position. I'm willing to bet you this is one of those institutions that knows something about this company. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of people that were uh, speculating on this. This isn't a Chinese stock, by the way. There was there was like there was a lot of that talk going back and forth. Uh, the stock isn't a Chinese company. It's actually based out of Delaware, if I remember correctly but um uh they just have a lot of branch offices in china because they have direct access to raw materials and manufacturing for their iot devices so these guys develop iot hardware that's internet of things so think like small embedded devices for like and eh, like smart homes and uh and like security systems uh temperature control systems you know little things um just like small technology but um, a lot of their manufacturing and software development happens in the Far East. So that's why I mentioned that in my, uh, in my info. This isn't a Chinese play. Like, it's not a Chinese-owned stock. They, uh, they just operate a lot of their offices out of China. So that's, that's why I mentioned that. 
that does affect them. Like the Chinese government does affect them. But the thing is, is that BRQS isn't in any of the spaces that China's worried about. Like they're not doing anything like managing internet infrastructure. They're not, um, they're not doing any social media stuff and they're not playing in the financial markets at all. So those are all the things that the Chinese government regulates very heavily. And that's why things like, um, I was trying to think like if say you had like a data provider or some sort of internet service provider that was based out of China trying to go international, that would be a huge problem for them because the Chinese government can say like, no, you have to shut down your operations in the United States tomorrow. And like they'd be forced to, they didn't have a choice. BRQS isn't one of those such companies. It's not doing anything that China's heavily regulating at the moment. So let's see. Uh, Let's see one mighty hex more selling pressure tomorrow it's possible um if uh if i've learned one thing from the way that this uh this stock moves is that it does get a lot of morning selling pressure i suspect that that's probably day traders there's um there is an algorithm involved here though so it does get um it does get <laughs> more and more interesting what i do suspect though is that these timelines are going to start stretching out a bit so if uh, if BRQS continues to behave the way that it's been behaving, yeah, that looks pretty close. So what I suspect it might do is it will, if it repeats the same pattern that it did the last few days then it should make another move to about what was this it's a 40 percent move so if it breaks this triangle in after hours then what i suspect it will do is make a move up to about 50 cents at the maximum so if it does this again if it repeats its previous pattern, fifty cents would be about the uh, would be about the mark. And then what I suspect will happen is it will find support back at this level again. So I'll mark this as a as a significant uh, trend. This is kind of like a midpoint trend, the yellow line here. Just kind of like noticing it swings up and then it touches it it swings up and then goes and trades below it and then it finds its support down here and then it'll swing back above it and then it'll find a midpoint and swing back down so if it repeats its previous pattern what i suspect is it'll break up through here and then it will retrace back through support and it might go and find support here or at one of these other previous levels of support who knows but i'm hoping it just continues to establish higher lows But right now it's looking strong, so uh, it's it's holding up 35 cents pretty nicely. BRQS is. Uh, I would say that if the company can, uh, if the company can wait out any kind of a reverse split, um, before and and get back above one dollar naturally without having to reverse split, that would be far better for the company. Because um, if BRQS does. Uh, if it does have to reverse split, it's not seen as a good thing. It's seen as a, um, as like a, well, they're out of options kind of situation. Go ahead and add this alert here. If you're curious what I'm doing here, what I'm doing is uh, I'm creating a, um, I'm creating an alert for our Discord. So if you're not here at uh, Hell's Trading Floor, what you can do is uh, if you're a professional member of Hell's Trading Floor, you can um, get alerts on all of my technical patterns anytime a stock that I'm watching makes any significant technical trend change or anything like that. This will automatically alert you in the Discord.
so we'll see how this goes. Um, but now, of course, now that I've like now that I've called this out and I'm like, oh, I think I understand how this is moving. I'm sure that like some algorithm is going to be like, oh, th this was discovered and they're going to change it. So who knows? But if uh, if we're fortunate, then um, what uh, if we're fortunate enough to see a repeat of the uh, same patterns that we've seen the last several trading days? What can happen is BRQS breaks up and out of this pennant and jumps up to uh, the 50 cent mark before it decides to retrace. So that would be a pretty swanky uh, day trading opportunity. But ultimately, this goal, the goal of this for me is to put pain on market makers. So my my trading strategy is to continuously accumulate shares in this company. It looks pretty good. It looks like a good swing investment. So I'm I'm kind of trading around this to try to beat the market maker. Um, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. Doesn't always go so well. All right. Looks like we're closing below our open today, but it's still, let's see, on the day, BRQS is... Still up 10%. That's pretty good. <laughs> we had a 14% and a 31% day back to back. So 10%, like, I can't complain. Like, who could be upset about that? I ain't mad. Looks like we're going to close here in about uh, 13 seconds. Go ahead and watch this thing on the minute chart and see where we close at. 35 cents. Let's do it. Give us 35. Not because it means anything. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, wow. Is this a misprint or... Uh, okay, it's a misprint. <laughs> okay, this will correct. Uh, close of the day was at 34.98 cents. So not bad, pretty good close. Up 10% from yesterday's close, um, down about, uh, looks like, where did we open at? We opened it. Ah, uh, here we go. So we opened at 36 and 0 0.01 cents and we closed at 49 okay so we we retraced by 0 0.03 cents <laughs> it's basically nothing um so the stock ended up trading uh the pretty pretty flat from where it opened at but uh, that's really not what matters the fact that it gapped up and held support is really what is significant here so it had a really nice surge going into close yesterday. Uh, we didn't see that same activity today, but um, I, I think that BRQS is going to continue. This trend is actually pretty strong, and the pattern has been uh, rather faithful. Docs the Fox says shows 35 cents and 0.85. Uh, all right. I believe you. Maybe trading view uh, just uh, doesn't have the same. Oh, well, mine's still showing a close of uh, thirty-four ninety-eight cents. Oh well. Mine's got thirty-five eighty-five. <laughs> what broker are you on, J J Ruff? I'm I'm looking at both Weeble and TradingView. Really? TradingView for me is thirty-four eighty-four. This is bizarre. Yeah. That's yeah, 30, 30, 30, 30. okay. That's really weird. <laughs> that's very weird. Okay. Well, I don't have an explanation for that, but anyway, hopefully everybody is uh, feeling nice and cozy and warm and fuzzy about their uh, about their trades on BRQS. Um, I am going to uh, I'm going to take a like a quick five minute break just to use the bathroom and uh, I'll be right back to uh, answer any questions on some other tickers before we uh, close off for the day. 
uh, y'all, y'all in the professionals and the mods and analysts, feel free to uh, chat back and forth and uh, cover any other questions if you're um, if you receive them. Oh man, the cat's away. The mice will play. Meow. <laughs> Did someone want? There was someone asking something about market data that I heard about closing prices. It's interesting. We've got some discrepancies on the same platform, nonetheless. Well, when you, may when you have four digits after the bloody dollar sign, you know you're never gonna get it right. Um. So for example, the interactive brokers state it's thirty-five cents dead. Oh, well, on my list. I don't think it Anyway. Well, Spy well, dropping well, nearly $10 from its day high today. I think Mullen's doing its thing again. I think they're pumping it in after hours <clears> to <throat> scoop up shares. Speaking my, of my. an after hours pump, ISPO is up 17% and climbing. Looks like um somebody in the YouTube chat there, um Chad Ho says something about a thirteen G. I'm uh looking into that right now. My interactive broker says point three five eight five official close. Did I sell my ISPO? I think I did. Did I? <gasps> I did. Damn it. I sold it yesterday. <laughs> but, but then there was, there, there was Capital many. Management LLC discloses stake in ISPO. Who? Cool. Tang, T A N G, Capital Management LLC has filed a 13G form with the Securities and Exchange Commission disclosing ownership of 2,432,600 shares of Inspirato Incorporated, Class A. This represents 5% ownership of the company. Nice. So we're bullish on Tang Capital, it looks like. I mean, still, this wouldn't have run up to where my price was, so that's it. I made that back from um, BRQS. Hey guys, I'm back. Thanks for your patience. Ah uh, yes, Sean Elke, I am your resident flight leader, airplane pilot, whatever. <laughs> Welcome back, TD. Hey, what's going on? We were flying through the ISPO airlines there. They had a 13G, Tang Capital Management has a 5% share and they jumped about 15 percent now they're only up 13 but pretty interesting ispo that was a squeeze candidate wasn't it as well it was it looks like it did it's also a very young chart it's run like 600 percent one day and then just sold off ever since yeah well looks like it squeezed that's that's a that's a squeeze if I have ever seen one. It went up by a thousand percent at the high and then died. It's just kind of that's kind of how it looks like to me. Ooh, wow! Shorts got hammered on this one. Oof, oof! That's a big oof. This algorithm is stupid. I don't know why I had Super Trend telling. Uh... <laughs> wow, yeah, don't follow Super Trend on a daily chart. Okay, uh, what other plays were we looking at? Let me go see if I can catch up on everybody. Uh, positive EV. Do I think that AMC GME are dead in the water until we get closer to the GME announcement? I'm holding either way. Just curious if I see anything on the TA side. Um, I'll go ahead and take a look at AMC first, um, just to kind of show you what I'm thinking. Um, I 
don't pay nearly as much attention on the GME announcements. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I haven't been able to do much research on anything. I'm in and out of one ticker at a time for the most part, just because of uh, just because of work. But AMC, I see a uh, I see a big surge and a retrace, which it consolidated after this falling wedge, and I've been waiting for it to make a move. But the uh, the consolidation has been pretty consistent. What I'm actually going to do is take a look at the ins the uh, short exempts inspector on AMC from Scourgebot and see what that says. And I'll do uh, I'll do GameStop also. But I'm still waiting for. Oh, yep. Uh, it's just pushing once one point five cents in the after hours. Oh wow! Six fifty now. Nice. See what did I say? I said it going to move shortly after the bell closes, or after the closing bell. <laughs> Look yeah, at it go. Level two is <laughs> level two is just loaded as it's normal trading hours. That's hilarious. Like, See. One hundred twenty thousand shares at thirty six thirty on the bid. Wow! Some whale in a foreign market is just like loving this right now. One of the members in the uh, Discord called out ISPO at eleven o'clock today. Hmm. If I had a penny for every time someone said that. <laughs> I'll take a, a screenshot in the text. I'll take a look at it. Okay, so um, we're about ready to hit. We're about ready to hit T plus six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, tomorrow is T plus six on AMC's uh, short exempt. Its most recent short exempt spike. The short exempts recently haven't been particularly big. Um, they're about one percent of the. Um, they're about one percent of the uh, total short volume. Um, it's not. It's not enough to signal that market makers are struggling to control the stock right now. But uh, if we were to go back in time a little bit, we'll find that they have been losing control of it over the uh, course of the last month. They did manage to regain control after that halt, which I went and looked at the numbers. The halt was not legitimate. Um, that The movement in AMC did not meet the qualifications for a volatility halt. Um, it just, the price didn't move far enough, fast enough. It doesn't make sense why it, it was not a legitimate halt. There's no reason it should have halted. So Did you compare it to the full specification from the exchange. Yeah. It's quite, there's different conditions during, mm -hmm. uh, the first so many minutes of opening. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I feel like they changed the rules. <laughs> the rules are the rules are a lot more. The rules are as liquid as and the rules are about as liquid as the market makers' pockets. Well, the, the the rules on the on it are about ten pages long, I think. It's uh, I yeah, I thought it was a lot, a lot simpler, <laughs> but uh... okay. Darius Dixon, welcome to the Denison level. Appreciate your support, my friend. Thank you, dude. Thank you very much. Jared Cochran, what's all the talk about Mullen being done? Shorts are out, lawsuits are happening. Um, well, I mean, Mullen's just not doing very well right now. But yeah, there's there's lawsuits against it for like materially false statements uh, made by the CEO, apparently. These are all just based off of the short report that was issued by Hindenburg. And of course, Hindenburg had a massive short position against Mullen at the top. 
when uh, when they knew they were going to issue a, a a basher report against them. So, you know, whatever. But the story with um, the story with Mullen is just that it's broken technical patterns and it doesn't look like it has any strength right now. And bears are in control. So you could take that for what it is. Mullen does still have some potential as a company, but it's just right now it's not uh, it's not in bulls control. So, and I'm not in a position anymore because my options all expired worthless. I sold my shares. Um, I sold my shares in Mullen after uh, after we broke down past thirty three dollars and uh, and sixty cents. Um, it was like a it was like a full forty percent retrace. So that was just that was just the level that I got out at. The uh, options that I had were expiring last Friday, and I just held those till expiration, and they just burned. So that was the uh, that was the end of my Mullen trade, and I'll look to get back in if it breaks down to a uh, dollar, and I'll reconsider it. But you know, the fundamentals of the company had changed. I'm still I still think that the stock is manipulated, but. I still have to be realistic and I have to tell people the truth and be honest about any changes that I make. Let's see. GFAI was up 40% pre-market this morning. Yeah, I did see that. I see that uh, GFAI made a pretty strong move this morning and uh, it looks like it's uh, making a move in post-market today as well. That's actually... Um, it's actually quite encouraging. I still have my GFAI position. Same hurts to say, but the numbers are still are still still there. I'm I, I'm down like thirty percent. It's not a fun position. It kind of gapped down on me, and I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, but uh, I mean the numbers are still there. So yeah, Never numbers know. are still there. Shorty shorts are very much in place. So. It was a retrace. I should have uh, I should have been patient and waited for a better fill. But what can you do? Uh, I'm not giving any price predictions or price targets. Um, I uh, I do have some. Nobody does. Yeah. As a matter of fact, nobody nobody knows that. What I do see is that there is resistance at fifty cents. So if it goes to fifty cents, it will probably get rejected there, and it will have to find support somewhere between. 40 and 45 cents. That's that's the only thing that I can say. RX22, thank you for the $6.66. I appreciate that. <laughs> ATER held up today, which was surprising. Um, yeah, I was looking at ATER. It was... Uh, ATER I've added to the Diamond Plays uh, in the Discord, by the way, for those who are uh, curious. Um, or for those that uh, didn't see that announcement but yeah ater i've added it to the diamond plays and i do have a position in this stock um i believe my position is set for uh have options contracts for late may may 20th um i got a mix of five and seven and a half dollar calls so a little out the money but uh not by much the um the way that I look at it is that just based on technicals, ATER is oversold and it's sitting at support, uh, or it was, and it ended up getting pushed back up from that. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, no complaints from me. ATER I do consider as a very legitimate short squeeze candidate because of just the high amount of short interest on it. And also uh, the CEO has publicly come out and stated that they have confirmed uh, unaccounted for shorts with or short positions with unaccounted borrows, meaning naked shorts, and he seems to be very vocal and uh, interested in combating that. Kind of reminds me of uh, I can't remember the CEO of uh, Overstock's name, but he was one of the first uh, executives to publicly make a move against short sellers that were naked shorting his company when he found out about it. I think he referred to them as the Sith Lords, which didn't help their stock at all. Nobody took him seriously when he started talking about it. This was back in 2006 or 2007. Um, 
but he's one of the few CEOs that was talking about um, naked shorting and ATER's CEO is now only, he's like one of, you know, a rare breed who's willing to come out publicly and say, yes, we are being attacked by Wall Street and uh, we are going to fight them. So, yeah. Uh, Paolo Frion, I already covered BRQS. I'm going to move on to some other tickers, but if you want to check out the uh, uh, the earlier part of the stream, we talked about it at length for about a good half hour. So um, just jump back into the stream about 45 minutes and you'll you'll get plenty of it. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? PHIO, that was another one that was kind of getting our attention. It's retraced after quite a move. This was a really exciting candle. It's exceeded its average trading by about a uh, hundred times. So kind of an inexplicable jump in the stock with no, no real explanation. Um, they did get a uh, regulatory clearance from France, but that was months ago. So I don't see any recent news that would explain this jump. So it could be a whale positioning themselves. Um, who knows? No idea. But either way, if I recall correctly, PHIO is a short squeeze candidate. So Clint Beastwood, uh, what do I think about the prog name change? Do I think it's something to get excited about? Eh, rebranding is always uh, is always interesting. Uh, I haven't seen many rebrands since I started doing this um, in companies that I've traded. But companies might rebrand in order to uh, change their face. Progenity's had its name for quite a long time. Um, but this also can be a signal of a rebrand to uh, meet with expectations for an acquirer. So if there is anything in the works for an acquisition of Progenity, they may be ask, being asked to rebrand themselves um, in order to conform to uh, a new partnership agreement. So that's one possibility that I consider. And if that is the case, then yeah, an acquisition or some kind of a merger or even just a, uh, just a part partnership announcement of any kind would be a reason to be bullish. Progenity is really oversold right now. Um, I never expected it to get this low. And of course, tons of people are pissed off at me and telling me, oh God, you, you sold, you sold calls and bought puts against this, didn't you? No, I'm actually, I sold puts and they're deep in the red right now. So, um, if those don't, <laughs> if, if it doesn't get above a hundred, uh, dollar 50 by July, then I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be buying some pretty expensive prog shares, but I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty confident that progenity will get above a dollar 50 before then. Um, nevertheless, it was kind of bad timing on my part. I would have rather have sold them now when they're worth like three times <laughs> what I sold them for. But anyway, uh, Progenity is getting ready to uh, getting ready to create its uh, base of support here. I would have expected this to. Uh, I would have expected this consolidation to flatten out a little bit more. But you know what? That's okay. Not. Not too upset. It's, it's just uh, RSI is divergent on the daily, as a matter of fact. Oh like, yeah, quite severely. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, you were right. Huh? Interesting. Uh, I'm gonna switch this to a red, and I'm gonna clean some of these up because we got a lot of dirty, dirty, dirty lines. Okay, so Progenity is forming this, uh, it, it's formed a falling wedge. Uh, so if you want to follow the lines, there's the blue line and the red line. And I have a, uh, I have a midpoint of support set here. Um, this is most likely going to act as resistance at around $1.25. So what I'm looking for Progenity to do is it's probably going to dance around uh, in this area until it breaks out and tries to make a run for the uh, for the top here. The one possibility, if this trend continues, then Progenity will bounce around as it goes down this falling wedge down to 
potentially 50 cents. Like that's always a possibility. Who knows? Um, but I don't, I don't see that happening. <laughs> Uh, the MACD is starting to show its uh, its return to strength. So as Progenity is sold off, the technicals are lining up for it to start making another move. It's been in this zone of demand for a while, and I think it's just waiting for somebody to come back up and accumulate it. Um, so pretty soon, I'm thinking, is when Progenity will start to get bought up. I'm going to probably average down on my leaps um for 2024 they're really cheap right now um i don't have the cash liquid right now but i do want more progenity this is uh this is one of the few stocks that i'm like really a long-term ever bull on this is one of those stocks i'm gonna add to my retirement account i'll just collect dividends forever until i'm an old man I'm just kind of upset that my cost average is like way up at $3 because I bought so many shares above it and uh, the value of that just went down because I never sold calls against it. I figured that it was going to uh, squeeze much more violently, but it moved pretty, it moved kind of like a snail and then they diluted out of nowhere without warning. So that was kind of, that was kind of bad foresight on my part. What I what I really didn't expect though was just for it to keep consolidating to the downside for this long. It's quite excessive, and this gap down on the uh, on the earnings date really really hammered me. So for anybody who's like pissed at me, I'm pissed at me. I lost a lot of money on Progenity. I lost more money on progenity over the past several months than I had gained during the squeeze. So you can be mad if you want to, but like I'm, I'm pissed too. It sucks. It's just the way that it is though. Like this happens. You have to take, uh, you have to take responsibility for your trades. Jory Lee wants to know about Excella. All right. We'll take a look at Excella. Um, Excella Technologies. So I I day traded this one for a loss at one point back in the beginning. Uh, I think I got in sometime in February and I sold it to average down in Mullen and that paid off pretty well. Um, but I did take a loss on Excella and kind of glad that I did because it sold off even more now. I don't know enough about the company to really uh, give you a proper opinion on the fundamentals, but I could show you based on technicals and at least their, um, their share count and their volume average is right now. It's not looking very volatile, but as we approach earnings, I might expect it to start making some moves. The stock really needs to get above a dollar, though, because pretty soon they're gonna they're gonna get a warning from uh, from Nasdaq of delisting, and uh, that doesn't happen right away. Like the company gets plenty of time; they get like almost uh, they get almost a year to fix it from the time that they get warned by Nasdaq. But um, there is going to uh, there is going to be an announcement at some point if Nasdaq. Uh, listing requirements of minimum $1 bid don't get achieved for more than uh, more than a day. Excel gets until August 2021 for getting uh, I I assume you mean 2022. Um Excella only failed listing requirements as of December, so You might be thinking of BRQS. BRQS um, BRQS has until August 2022 to get back up to a dollar. Um, Excella, I don't think, has received their warning yet. Um, but anyway, uh, in terms of the technicals, it's still in a bull flag. Um, 
this is a uh, this is a bull flag because it's a downward channel that tend to break upward. So what I will expect to see is for uh, Excel to make a breakout above. Um, it'll be above forty cents at this point. Go ahead and extend this out a little bit more. Okay, so if you see Excella drop again, here, let me go ahead and write this out because I can't really type and think at the same time. The beauty of this is that Excella is now in is really really oversold and it's at a price that's attractive to retail because naturally retail likes things that are cheap. So if you see something like Excella that's shorted into oblivion and it's sitting at like 35 cents, then you have you have a great opportunity for retail to suddenly just take a sudden interest and surge the price. But uh, that's going to be dependent on other factors, and there's got to be news and fundamentals and things of that nature. So um, that's all important to keep in mind. Um, Excella did launch a buyback, I see. So that's uh, that's actually interesting. Let's see what they are looking at doing. They're looking to exchange up to 100 million common shares for up to 125 million of its 6% Series B cumulative convertible perpetual shares. Is, is that common stock? Oh, it's preferred stock. Okay. So is there B stocks? Um, Excella Technologies B stocks. So these are the these are the shares that they're buying back. So if Excella's B series stock gets a buyback for a hundred million shares or 125 million. I think they would hit the 125 million dollar mark first. It did move on that news though, so good for Excella. I don't see any other news on it. Scrap Queen received notice on February 8th. Excel gets until August 2021. Okay. All right, I'm a little bit confused by the by the chat right now, so sorry about that. Anyway, um Excella is consolidating into a nice side channel right here, so this is actually a pretty good sign. Um, if it does manage to hold this support, stays flat and above 33 cents, then it's likely to break out of this bull channel right here. But uh, just be aware that uh, the last time it did this, it got rejected pretty hard especially as it got close to a dollar. This is a uh, this is a stock that's being targeted if if this kind of stuff is happening. This is uh, this probably created an evening star pattern on the hourly chart, I bet, didn't it? Ah uh, yeah. It ran after hours and not quite an evening star, but um, Ah, there it did. Spinning top spinning top doji it's not not quite the same as an evening star but it's still a bearish candle this is um this is a symptom of the stock trading uh wait a second i'm looking at the wrong candle ah yeah this is what i was looking for Okay, 
never mind. It looks like something else entirely. I don't know what to call that pattern. Um, well, anyway, this is what I'm looking at for Excella. If, uh, if you're trading Excella, it's in, it's in a consolidation pattern right now. This is, this is bullish, um, considering that it's in a bull flag. So as it consolidates sideways for a while, give it a few more days and look for a breakout to the upside. Um, be aware that it's got resistance up here at, uh, looks like, uh, looks like you're probably going to hit resistance at just below 50 cents. So if this is being targeted by market makers and short sellers, then this may actually be an arbitrage stock. Um, there's an arbitrage technique called seller boxing. It's, um, I talked about this with BQRS too, but uh, any entity that trades stocks that are shorted down below a dollar, they will engage in seller boxing, which is basically using short shares because they're extremely cheap um, to continuously create selling uh, and create synthetic volume on the stock. And because the market maker is operating there as well, they're scooping shares and uh, like fractions of a penny off of the top with every single trade. Um, and they're incentivized to do this because below $1, the stock really struggles. So this is a situation where if Excella is going to survive, it needs to, uh, it needs to get some help from, uh, it needs to get some help from retail and a whale. It has to get above the dollar mark in order to save itself, which is at this point, you're looking at a uh, you're looking at a 350 percent increase in stock price from where it's currently sitting at. But yeah, we don't know why Excella is being hit. As far as I know, it's like a decent company that's operating in AI technology and stuff, um, which I always think is pretty cool. I like AI technology, but if it's uh, if they don't get above a dollar before its deadline date. Somebody said that it was August of last year, which doesn't make any sense. Um, I, I'm assuming they meant August of this year. So if NASDAQ listing requirements uh, state that they need uh, they need to get compliant or above a dollar before August, then expect a reverse split for the company to try to save itself um, from getting delisted. Doesn't mean that the company will go bankrupt if it gets delisted, but all the shares go worthless because the stock is no longer traded. It basically the stock goes to zero. It's currently uh, 340.8 million shares on the uh, on the float. Um, doesn't say what their outstanding shares are, but I imagine it's pretty similar. And if I recall correctly. Excella had a pretty high short interest as well. One of the highest, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead and take a look at that really quickly before we move on. Oh, I guess not 6% of the free float. Interesting. Short interest was super, super, super high. Okay, so shorts bought at all right. Shorts got their positions at around eighty-five cents. They closed their positions around sixty cents. So they made almost a um, made almost a uh, twenty-five percent gain. Mm. The short interest is rising on it again. Um, but I would say that this thing is definitely a victim. This is definitely a victim stock. The thing is, is that it doesn't have much support from retail from what I can see. The volumes, the volume is just not there. It doesn't mean that it couldn't get there at some point, but 
there has to be uh, there has to be some support from retail. Current short interest and cost to borrow fees aren't high enough that I think that this will squeeze anytime soon. Utilization's also not maxed out, so there's a lot of ammo left for shorts. Somebody was also asking about Redbox. I was looking at this one. Kadud actually called this out in the Discord and told me about this. Um, I did see that the cost of borrow average was extraordinarily high. I did see that it made a big move. Um, it got up to three dollars at one point today, uh, or like three fifty, something like that. So I did see that. Um, short interest is forty percent of the free float, or forty-two percent currently as of the update. And utilization is maxed out. It's been maxed out for a while. Cost of borrow fee is sky high. It looks like somebody took a serious issue with this stock because they have been shorting this thing for a long time. This thing got absolutely crushed. It was at $15 uh, dollars up here at its peak, and it just got smashed. Don't know what the hell that's all about. But um, utilization's been dancing between, uh, looks like it's been averaging between 80 and 100% utilization. And just for the past, uh, at least for the past month, it's been at 100%, which is quite a bit. Um, I'll do a quick inspect on RDBX. Now this is a stock that can actually get some retail support because it's one of those, um, it, it's, it's a, uh, well, for lack of a better description, it's, it's nostalgic. Um, I remember renting movies from Redbox as a teenager and, uh, I, I loved getting a new movie from Redbox and they branched out into games and I always thought that that was uh, really cool. It, basically brought the blockbuster to whatever store you were at and uh, I I loved it I'm really I'm really surprised that the stock is performing so poorly I don't know enough about the company itself or how it's performing or what its bottom line looks like right now but I imagine that it's probably got some fundamental reasons for being shorted so heavily There's a lot of failures to deliver on it, though. This is interesting. Short estimate of free float. Six oh, I get it. I know what they did. They shorted the hell out of it before it uh, had a dilution event. That's what this was. Somebody knew they were going to dilute, and that's why this thing did this. If I put the short interest next to the short of free float. Let me get rid of the exchange reported interest. Why am I not getting a full picture? Oh. Well, I don't know what's up with Ortex, but it's not showing me a full picture on RDBX's uh, on RDBX's short interest. That's kind of concerning. I'll send a message over to the Ortex team and ask them what that's all about. We'll see if uh, we'll see if Ortex can figure out what's going on with their data feed and why this is an incomplete uh, short interest picture. Because this, I see the utilizations maxed out, but there may just be errors on it. I'm not sure. We'll find out, and I'll get uh, I'll get new information from the uh, Ortex team. Okay, uh, what else can we look at? I gotta catch another meeting. 
so I'm going to have to bail out here pretty soon. Okay, somebody's been asking about CRTX for a while. Uh, Dennis DDD, thanks for the $5, dude. Really appreciate it. Uh, your thoughts on any GG? That's new egg, right? 95% float owned by insiders, low float, 8 million, highest short interest currently, ran to 70 July 21 with no short interest. Interesting. Well, thanks for the super chat. I'll take a look at it. Let's see what new eggs got. I love new egg too. Like I'm a, I love new egg. I get all of my tech from there back in the day. They were one of the best uh, tech retailers. Okay, 32% shorted. What's up, Verde? I was just looking at this uh, earlier, uh, and it looks like the IV finally cooled off a bit. It's down to like 120, 150, something like that. Really? That's interesting. Okay. So I was considering looking at it a bit closer as well. Oh, it's nice to see that the short interest and the short percent of free float is tracking together very closely. What's the loans look like? Loans are pretty damn close too. Yep. Okay. So market makers are not uh, are not heavy against this stock right now. Where is the average at? Show me their average and what's the utilization. Okay, it's been dancing around. Okay, a low of 70, midpoint of 90, and at 100% right now. Okay, good. All right, they're, they're, the conditions are right for a squeeze. The conditions are right. Let's see what the age of the loans are, how long these guys have been holding. Ooh, they've been holding a long time. Okay, so these guys have been in this since. Okay, a lot of shorts got in right around here. A lot of them. Must be an average price of between eleven fifty and ten dollars is the average price. Currently, we're at 650. Short's been holding a really long time. There was a lot of short interest that increased on this particular day. So a lot of new shorts came in and that brought the average down. Okay, all right, I'm tracking. So we had the oldest shorts have been in since $10. Uh, best case scenario for bulls. Um, Eleven dollars uh, is more the average. Had a big surge of them come in at around six fifty-seven dollars by about uh, we'll say by about eight hundred thousand shares. So twenty-five percent of these, uh, twenty-five percent of the free float that is short is shorted at ten dollars and the remaining eight percent of the free float is shorted at around 650 or so in order for this thing to squeeze the price needs to uh, take a reverse to the upside and start challenging ten dollars and move beyond it the cost to borrow is pretty high so shorts are paying a pretty big fee right now um, these guys have been uh, holding for a while Shorts have a lot more patience than you think. Um, but if they do start seeing this move against them, I bet you that the old shorts might cash out of their positions in order to uh, lock in some of those profits. The security lending volume spike here. This is interesting. I want to take a look at the short exempts on this one and see if the market makers have been playing in this one at all. What's interesting also looks like from 5 to 10, you have a huge gamma ramp. In the I next... just saw your post, yeah. Okay. Okay, yes. All right, so between 5 and $10 strike, there's a gamma ramp between 2.5% uh, of the float to 15% of the float going in the money. So that that's big. And the live options show... 
I'll go ahead and pull this up here for everybody else to see. Thanks for pulling Hold these it. up for a day. Could you get me the uh, Could you get me the inspect output yeah. for uh, ever since uh, January, please? Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Okay, so here's the gamma ramp on New Egg. Looks like uh, we are currently sitting at 1.2 percent of the float currently in the money, uh, at around uh, at around the current market price of just below six dollars. If the stock goes to ten dollars, then you're looking at about fourteen, thirteen percent of the you're float. You're still going showing Gore-Tex. I am. How? Yes. Oh no, sorry. I'm. I'm just. Oh, that's just. No, you're. You're fine. Yeah, that's I'm just sorry. the. That's I'm just sorry. the YouTube lag. You're good. Uh, YouTube. Sorry. YouTube will see it. <laughs> um, right. So, between. Between six and ten dollars is kind of a tall order. Hmm. Okay. Most of these, most of these are expiring tomorrow. Yeah, that's my only concern is that they have weeklies, which is a fucking killer. Yeah, weekly weekly options are stupid. Nobody should ever be buying weekly options. That's a dumb idea. Unless you're buying the months out in advance, it's a dumb idea. Thinking that you're going to predict the uh, the meteoric rise to a hundred percent of whatever the hell it's worth on any given Friday is just asking to lose money. You may as well just flush it down the toilet. Okay, but I do like how Newegg has established a base of support here. It's a really good sign. The volume is there. The MACD is down below. So if it holds its support here at $6 um, and stays close to it, then it could make a big move. Mm, the short exempts are interesting too. Okay, so the short exempts got... The short exempts got pretty ridiculous on the 28th, which was the day that it made that big move, I suspect. Short exempt ratio was 1.2. So a lot of trading volume, a lot of shorts. 55% of this was shorts. Yeah, 28th run from $5 up to 8 something, and it closed at 740. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what I'm curious about is if we were to go back to these on a daily chart, uh, or I'm sorry, a, uh, on a 15-minute chart, if we would see that this was a slow roll up, or if it got spikes going up. So let's go take a look at it. Uh, if I go down to, let's start at a 30-minute chart. Mm-hmm, yeah. This was this was whales. Yeah, these were whales. Somebody made a big move to get out of these positions all at once. I mean, really big. Okay, let me go down to the one minute chart just to get a little bit closer look at it. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, these were whales. 
this wasn't retail doing this. I'm betting you what this was is shorts covered down here. They decided that they had hit their price target because getting going from 10 to five, that's good. Like as a short, you went you went and cut the stock in half. That's a good trade. So I'm betting you that shorts exited here and then they switched long and that's got this thing started. And then whales and day traders and retail followed it in and then the shorts turned around and switched short again. But there's still a lot of shorts that are in their position. I'm willing to bet that they saw the consolidation and that it was going to reverse, probably based off of like an RSI or a stochastic index um, indicator, or maybe MACD switch, whatever the case may be. But in any case, I'm willing to bet that this was shorts switching long uh, a portion of their position, catching this run, and then switching back to short again, doubling down on their position. So this one may see downside in the short term, but it's consolidated. It's consolidated for a while. I would say I'm, I'm going to wait on this one. I'm not going to take a position right now. I feel like it's too early, um, but I will go ahead and I will set some, I will set some lines up on here. Definitely a falling wedge pattern. I like that. It's like my favorite pattern. Yeah, well, what I would love to see with this is at least a big chunk of the um, Friday's expiries, tomorrow expiry to be rolled out into next month or something like that. Yeah. Okay. You got a big inverted head and shoulders here as well. So this is a nice bullish signal. This is about ready to hit the tip of the shoulder. So I'll tell you what. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look for a... I'm going to look for it to cross here. set it at six dollars okay so I've got my I've got my head and shoulders and my neck set up here. It, it's a really wonky, it's a really wonky pattern the way that it looks right right now because there's after hours stuff in here. If I switch this to regular trading hours, it'll look a little bit more clear. Okay. So yeah. Big surge, but still head and shoulders. So I want to see this thing touch six dollars and reverse. And I want to see it break So these are my alerts that I'm setting for the uh, for the trading floor professionals. Um, be aware, this is also coming off of a, uh, a regular head and shoulders right now, and it's broken down below the neckline. So that's why I'm waiting on this. I want to see if this head and shoulders pattern completes or if this inverse head and shoulders takes over. Um, it would appear that this inverse head and shoulders did. Um, it, it's a very big one. So usually you trust the larger trend uh, rather than the short-term trend.
I guess you could argue that this was the head and shoulders here, uh, and it already broke and completed its pattern. But I'm going to look to see what this thing does. The, um, the falling wedge is a bullish pattern. I see an inverse head and shoulders here, also a bullish pattern. And if it completes and gets to, uh, gets to that $7 mark and keeps going up, then, well, on a much longer term scale going out till like November of last year, you'd be looking at it forming a cup. And that can actually be, that, that would be huge. Predicting a cup and handle is tricky business. And this is a heavily shorted stock, but a short squeeze could, uh, could be a big indicator of it, uh, making one of these big moves. And uh, the way that I'm looking at this stock, the way that it's played before, Yeah, it makes some pretty big and unexpected moves off of these patterns once it reaches these uh, zones of demand. And it's back there again. Like every time it touches, uh, last time that it touched $3, it pretty much squeezed. That's kind of interesting. I have to wonder if uh, I have to wonder if Newegg is being manipulated by a very big whale. Cause wow, look at this OBV. Look at this OBV. What the hell? I wasn't even paying attention to this, but if you look at the daily OBV, this stair step pattern is consistent, like stupidly consistent. Whoever is doing this, I suspect, is trying to buy this company. I think they're trying to acquire them. Look at this accumulation. That's from zero to 300 million on balance volume for a stock with an 11 million share float. Either somebody is getting some crazy money on the arbitrage or they are repeatedly, <laughs> they're repeatedly squeezing and shorting the stock in order to make money on the uh, in order to make money on the arbitrage that's interesting what the hell I I'm gonna pay close attention to this one it looks uh, it looks interesting I'm gonna wait for the pattern to complete just to be sure that it doesn't break down to a lower price but uh, if it starts making a move back up towards seven dollars I'm gonna look for it to start doing like uh, squeeze type move. Holy crap. This is a bigger move than AMC. Wow. All right. Well, like just, I said, just, I'm just uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to close this off on uh, you know, please be careful and, you know, respect your risk. Don't jump into this thing blindly. Um and don't take my word for it just because I see, you know, just because I see stuff like this going on doesn't mean that it will come to fruition and it doesn't mean that I'm it doesn't mean that I'm right. So please, you know, be patient and be careful. Sorry to cut you off, Verde. Oh, I was just going to say exactly the same thing. Just to, to be wary of the um, IV if you're going to play options and things like this, just because it's still mm -hmm. pretty juicy IV crush. Yep. Yep. That's That's exactly what I would say. Just be really, really careful. Because if there's anybody that's big playing in this stock, these yeah, micro floats like can be easily manipulated. We're talking about new egg mass fish. That's uh, N E G G. Okay. Uh, Solid DD, are you in BRQS? Yes, I am in BRQS. Thank you for asking. Yes, I am in BRQS. Uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to, uh, I'm not going to be able to cover all of these tickers in depth cause I got to catch a meeting. I saw somebody asking about C E N N. Um, oh boy. Um, C E N N. This is a very similar, this is another one of those alt global holdings plays. Yeah, it it looks like it's still in a downtrend. Um, I I don't I don't really have anything to say about it. It looks like it formed a falling wedge. 
and it uh, and it completed its pattern. It's now in consolidation, so who knows? It might break out now, but it's uh, it, it's in consolidation. So look for it to uh, look for it to break up above resistance at 175. Looks like everybody likes nice quartered or rounded numbers. So if it's going to break, look for it to break out above 175 before uh, before the next move. Uh, the next play was SENS. I haven't looked at SENS for a while. Still not doing well. Um, it's formed a bear pennant, so and it looks like it's breaking down. So SENS is probably going to go back down to a dollar, probably, which is very frustrating. This company I had so much belief and faith in, and uh, I knew that they were being targeted by a big player in the pharma industry. And I don't know. Maybe, uh, <sighs> I don't know. Maybe we'll win, but it's kind of depressing, honestly, because Senzionics is creating life saving technology. And as soon as they do something like that with diabetes, somebody wants to steal them and take everything that they have and shut them up, stuff a sock in their mouth, and tie a rock around their neck and throw them in the river. That's exactly what happens to these new, these big biotech stocks that have these game changing technology that can like, Hey, let's save a few million people. And then big pharma jumps in like, Nope, let's not do that. And then just assassinates the company with a massive short position. Uh, CRXT was the other one. Okay, CRXT looks like it's made a nice move upwards. I don't know about the shorts on this one, so I'll have to take a look at that really quickly. C -E uh, C -R C -R -X -T. Okay, CRXT shorts are, holy smokes, 632%. What the? F what? 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 There's a dilution. There has to have been dilution. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to look at this one in depth. I don't want to talk about this one without knowing what the heck is going on with it. Um, but the short interest is... Uh, it's in the realm of fantasy. So I don't know, what, uh, I don't know what's up with it. But I'm going to have to come back to you on that one. Uh, short interest at 630%. I wouldn't trust that that's accurate. There's probably been dilution. Um, but not saying that that means it won't squeeze. 100% utilized, I would also be skeptical of that. So just hold off uh, uh, Hold off making any quick judgments. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to take any positions in this until I know what's going on. And unfortunately, I have to go, so I'm going to uh, drop now. But thank you guys so much for coming by to watch the stream. And have a good day, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a hell of a time in the markets.